Hi guys, welcome back to Code Switch. When we usually work with ASP.NET MVC applications, we create view models and we pass the view models to the view engine. So view engines like Razor actually takes this model and replaces wherever it need to be there on the HTML page and stitches back and give us back an HTML string. So let's see how we can do the same stuff in a .NET Core console application. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the core library. So let's go to the NuGet. And here you can search for Razor Templating Core. Alright, so I think we have got our library. So this second one is our library, just so just install it. Accept the license. Done. So we are done installing the library. So now go back to the program. Now the set, now what we need to do is we need to create a Razor class library. So just add a new project. Here you can search for Razor. So now we got the Razor class library. Just click on next. Name your library. So I'm going to name it themes, something like that. Or or just I'm going to name it HTML themes. Okay, click on next. Now this is important. So right now I'm putting .NET 6 and make sure you are you tick this box support for pages and views. Now click on create. Now here is where we store our HTML and uh, our model. So just remove these unwanted folders, areas. We do not need that. Okay, so now we have set up the library. So now the first thing that we need to do is to create a model class. So just add a new class and I'm going to uh, call this class students. So that is our model class. Okay, so let's make this class public and then we can add three properties to the students. So the first property I'm going to make it uh, like a first name for the student. All right, for, for the second property, I'm going to make it as last name. And then we can have an age for the student. So now this will be an age. Okay, so now we have the model class student with three properties, first name, last name, and age. So now let's define, let's, let's create an instance of this model class. So let's initialize the model class. So our, my student, equal new student now let's initialize the properties so now just import it and initialize the properties the first property first name let's call it robert and now we need to set up the last name so let's uh, call it uh, robert boring okay now the age that we need to set let's say 32 Okay, now we have the model class ready. Now we need the HTML for this, right? So in order to get the HTML, we need to add an HTML to our Razor class library. So just add a new item. Here you can search for HTML. Now once you select the HTML, you need to name it whatever you want. So I'm going to name it like uh, a theme or something. Then add an extension CSHTML. Okay, now we got the CSH HTML file. Now the first thing that we need to do is to add a reference to our model class. Model class is student. So add a reference identifier like model. Then the namespace of our application. Namespace of our application is HTML themes. Just type in HTML themes. And then our model class dot student. Okay, now you can design the HTML in whatever way you want. Alright, now that we have done designing the HTML page. So now we have the model and the HTML. Now let's generate, pass this model and generate an HTML for this. So the first thing that we need to do, we can define a, a variable to store the HTML. So I'm going to store var HTML equals. Now we need to import this uh, new class from the library that is Razor template engine. Now let's import it from the nugget that we have recently installed. Tracer templating core. Alright, now it has got a few async functions. So let's call the render async function. 
So into the render async function, the first parameter is what we need to pass our name of the CSHTML file. So here our name is theme.cshtml. So put a slash and put name themes.cshtml. All right. Now the next item is the model. So in case our model is my student. So let's pass the my student. So this is all all it what we need to do. Now if you have custom view data or something like that. Like if you are familiar with MVC, you can pass view data and all these things view back and all these things to the uh, view. So in that case, if you want, you can define view data like this. Like you can create a dictionary of view data like var view data equal to new dictionary of string and object. Okay, now we have created a dictionary and into the dictionary you can add a few uh, view data if you want to put it inside your HTML when it stitches the HTML from the model. So here we can pass like uh, info a equal to a and info b equal to b or something like that. So this is purely optional. So uh, some people will just rely on the model. That's fine. Some people will use view data. That's also fine. And if you are using the view data as the third argument, you can pass the view data. All right, now we have done uh, with our setup. Let's try to see if this is working properly. So let's try to start our application. Before that, we need to await it because this is we are calling an async function. So since we are awaiting it, we need to make our main method also async. Async task, let's remove the void. All right, now let's try to run the project. Alright, so now we reach here and now we are getting an error and the error is saying that unable to find the view. Let's see why this is happening. This is happening because of a recent change that Microsoft did for .NET Core 6. If you look at the old behavior, we can have a views.dll that is generating. But in the new version from .NET 6, they have removed that in order to improve the compiler performance. So the compiler no longer produces a views assembly. So in order to resolve that, what you can do as a workaround is to downgrade the template uh, the racer class library so i'm going to use dotnet code 3.5 uh, for this 3.1 so because that is pretty stable so let's uh, downgrade it to 3.1 all right right now we have downgraded to 3.1 and now let's start the project we have a debugger on the html let's see all right so it hit okay now it passes let's see what we got in the html using an html viewer yes so now the data that we got from the model has been binded to the html so this is how we do the things thank you so much